Paul. I'm eating cornflakes in a plastic bowl. I've just said at least you get a, a proper bowl in prison. I mean, look at this. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't put a sheet of newspaper on the floor and put it on top of it for me. Stroke the head. I'll tell you what, the journey I've had coming in here today, I could kill. I yeah. could kill. <laughs> I wish they'd learn to indicate London when they're driving. Honest to God, they've no oh, idea. Well, they'll take off where they feel like it. <laughs> oh, oh the abuse I'm started. giving out. The window's down, the yeah. house. Yeah. White van man's got yeah. nothing on me. Well, listen. <laughs> I know someone... Anyway, I'm eating me breakfast. And if the went still, I said she had a part-time job. I thought she meant on the till in the oldie. <laughs> I didn't know she was doing this. So what do you think of her now she's a loose woman? Or has she always been a loose woman, Paul? She's got odd tendencies. What part of the body are we talking about that's loose? <laughs> We've got ten a lady on that stool. So <laughs> need it I we leave that there while your reputation's still intact, Silla. <laughs> Enjoy your breakfast, Paul. Thank you. Nice to see you, Dave. Thank you, love. Thank you. <laughs> okay, first up to <laughs> Yes, Paul, I'm not lying, am I? Reiterate for us. How much are we giving away? Well, today, Kate, we're giving away fifteen thousand pounds. Whoa! Whoa! All right, it's my woo, not yours. <laughs> Can't do nothing, can you? I can't wait for him to come out. Yes, you heard the man. Come, Britain's best loved entertainer on his rollicking adventures. Paul O'Grady is here. <laughs> oh no, he's already on the booze. <laughs> Doesn't bode well. You got gin in that? I don't know what's in it, but it tastes like bleach. <laughs> Disgusting at this time. They've got me then. on the aisle. I've got work to do, Kate. I can't be. I'll be going out with Silla now up west. We'll be back <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning in a skip. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to that. Not long to go now, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh... I couldn't resist it, sorry, I know, Sarah. the tenor lady thing. You know, he stood in for Richard and Judy on this morning and I'd just become 60. And you know what he put on the couch to talk to me? Newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> That's that age. How are you? I'm really good. Are you enjoying this? I, I love it. Oh, God, I'm the jangle. <laughs> we love having that. This is a little part-time job, is it, what you were saying? Uh, yeah? I thought you was on the till in the net, so I was somewhere the old day. <laughs> oh, oh, love, how much of a Viagra? Because you know they're selling Viagra in supermarkets now. <laughs> oh, they're not, are they? Imagine waiting in the checkout while she does a, che a price check. <laughs> <laughs> what about my fellas, the fellas that I go out with? Oh, they need loads. Never mind <laughs> Viagra. <laughs> 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 Viagra, it'd be like... Putting a flagpole on a, <laughs> a condemned building. But Stella goes out with her fellas. She has to have those paddles, you know, to resurrect. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just getting them in the taxi. <laughs> you need she to stop saying. Is he alive? So I shake them. <laughs> oh yeah. It smells all right, Stella. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Paul. You're back with us because, finally, you finished it, the second volume of your oh, memoirs. Oh, it's never ended. It's like Lord of the Rings, this thing. <laughs> Honest to God. The I, I only meant to do it. one, you know. I'm like, it's going to... I don't know how many I'm going to turn out. Another one and that's it. You're in the next one. I know. He signed this, uh, The Devil Rides Out, and it's funny because he says, uh, well, read this and weep because the next one's going to put you in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I know things, viewers. <laughs> I know things. <laughs> She's been things. I tell you, the same places. Tell me why it's called The Devil Rides Out. Because me mum, when I was a teenager, you know, going clubbing it, because I used to live to go out to clubs seven nights a week. If I didn't go clubbing it seven nights a week, I was a total failure. Couldn't stay in on a Saturday night. Oh, I'd be like a pallet <laughs> pulling my hair out. <laughs> And so I used to get all tarted up, you know, in the loons. Remember the denim yeah, loons? loons? And the leather bomber jackets, and penny round collar, reeking of aquamanda. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd come is down the... Is that you? That's me there. Oh, oh, my God. God. That's me wedding. <laughs> You're joking. Yeah. That's your wedding? Yeah. For the Portuguese lesbian? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had a full life. <laughs> But hang on, the devil. I mean, mother used to she'd be on the phone to me auntie and she'd take one look and she'd go, oh, the devil rides out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the least satanic thing as a 17 year old, well, it was, really. Because it? it was a Dennis Wheatley. He did all those black magic things That's on right. telly and all those I was horrors. forbidden to read any of that. Yeah, you know, because oh, yeah. a good Catholic household <laughs> could read that. So you have to read it on the sly in the shed. <laughs> And there's nothing in it. <laughs> nothing at all. Well, nothing. reading your book, I mean, oh, ladies, are you ready for this? At 18, he was so terrified by ghosts and ghoulies oh, in I the was. night. He got into his bed with his mother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and what did 
did she call you? Oh, oh man, nothing repeatable at this <laughs> hour. Actually, yeah. I've been to see The Exorcist. Oh, and that I've been... terrified me. I can't watch it to this day. Denise, <gasps> we came out in St John's Ambulance were there. I and know, I said, I give us a tablet. <laughs> and they said, what sort of tablet? I said, I'm not bothered, just give us a tablet. <laughs> and I, I wound myself up going home and I ran up the hill and I let myself in the backyard, you know, in the back door. And the house in pitch dark. And I, was, I got undressed and everything, got in my bed and I lay there and I thought, there's something in this bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I legged it into me, but of course, my mother's unconscious. She's had the valley and she's lying there. <laughs> And I jumped in next to and she went, Mad Mother of God! <laughs> <laughs> and she had a large print jean playdy library book. She went, What are you doing? Stupid <laughs> big sis getting in bed with your mother. The Pope said you can't go and see this film. It's, she said it's pornographic. I said it's not pornographic. <laughs> she said it is. I won't say what she said she was doing in the movie. I read the book, <laughs> yeah. It's an unusual place to it worship. Is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've agreed to kindly stay on with us for the rest of the show. We're going to take a short break now, but stick okay. with us because Paula Grady and Scylla are listening live. Okay. I know when you sat down to write this book, it was meant to be the conclusion of your autobiography, yeah. and it's ended up only covering the years between 18 and 25. Yeah. But I, got, well, I did a lot, you see, in those few years. You did, and none of it really terribly showbiz. None know. of it showbiz. What fascinated me was the fact that you were you were a carer for quite yeah. poorly yeah. people, yeah. weren't yeah. you, for quite yeah. a long time? I was a peripatetic for uh, Camden Social Services. A what? A peripatetic. Okay. Okay. No, Have you I mean, a pill for that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible rash. No, you go from job to job to job to job like your butterfly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you would live in with people at times, oh, wouldn't you? I don't know, man, way on me. Seriously, I... <laughs> I provided respite care. Not one of Scylla's boyfriends? No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to clean the taxi after. Put it that way. A bit of toilet roll and a bit of, you know, the jiffy clock. No, I... I, I you know, I used to... Uh, there was, I remember there was a lovely lady in Swiss Cottage and her husband, he had dementia, and she badly needed a break, so she, she didn't want a break, but she went off for three weeks and I went in and lived in 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with this really aggressive old man who thought I had a dog, which I didn't have. <laughs> and he used to sit and say, get that dog out of the house! <laughs> so at, at seven o'clock in the morning, I'd be saying, get out in the yard to an imaginary dog, get out! <laughs> I thought, I'm going round the loop here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, because he used to get up in the night and smash the house up, you, I had to, like, I said, I'm not getting into bed with him, not at these prices, no way. <laughs> <laughs> so they put a camp bed next to his bed for me. So I was like below him and I lay there. And I was so tired. And I'm lying there one night and I'm dreaming of having a wash. <laughs> and I looked up. And he straddled over the bed. <laughs> God almighty, you haven't even took me to the pictures. And he's like. <laughs> I'm weighing on me. Hey, have you kept your mouth but, shut? No, but I did. No, I had my mouth open. <laughs> But that was part, Catch part of the fly, job. Wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have to say, I mean, I did. I worked with lots of the families going through tough luck. I but have they to were say, lovely. I can't think of anything more wonderful than having you look after me. Seriously, oh, Lindy, you'll be just nice. No, no, no. <laughs> Nice. But the kids were a real. Some of the kids. It was a joy oh. to get hold of some of these kids. Reason you know, they, about the kids. I always had nets and scabies. You know, I'd be going up Camden High Street with a pram full of washing and five kids. <laughs> and they'd be coming out the black cap all the queens. They go, ah, I a They go, ah. <laughs> and I thought, real life is blaring in here into <laughs> Lily's life. You know, they, they thought nothing off seeing me with this bag of washing it's and an old tan I'm reading the book. You know, because I was on the telly having a whale of a oh, time. Oh, I know you yeah. were. And I thought, oh, gosh, have you been through all this? Cause I'm, seller, yeah. I know, <laughs> but you did it of your own accord. Oh, I know, I wasn't forced Because you loved it. looking after these children with special needs. I, I've always said... Because if you didn't look after them, who, who else well, would? Well, they all got split up and flung into care. You know, nobody cared for them. There were lots of families you went in, they didn't know how to play. They'd never been to the cinema. Mm -hmm. They'd never done anything. They'd never. Nobody had ever bought them new clothes. But so. you were barred out. Of, you were thrown out of one cinema, weren't you? Oh, <laughs> Camden Town. I took six kids to see Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, now these kids, the dysfunctional bottle. doesn't come, cover it. So we're all sat there, and I'm well into Snow White. Love it. I only went took the kids because I wanted to see it really. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. I'm bored because the Queen's not on. <laughs> and so the dwarfs come out the mine, hi ho! And as they're going across the screen, I saw this little figure <laughs> emulating what was going on, going hi, but doing extremely rude gestures to the audience. Oh no! 
And next thing, the down with the torches, you and your brood, out. And, I thought... <laughs> and when we got into camp, they all scattered, and I was stood in the middle of the street screaming. I had to go in the pet shop. I thought, oh, relax. relax. <laughs> Talking talk to the Snow White, at Christmas time, you're, you're bringing Lily back, aren't you? We haven't seen her for a while. I am, yeah, I'm doing a. Um... I don't know how I had that fit of madness. They must have got me in a good mood. I can't believe you're doing Lily again. You, you know always why? said never. I did a week in Panto this year in Wimbledon as Genie of the Lamp. Oh, that's right. With Pamela, Pamela yeah. did one. Pamela yeah. Anderson, she was the week she, before, yeah. and it was a hoot. And I thought, really enjoy. I've, I've enjoyed the camaraderie. You know what it's like. You the know? theatre. You're doing Southampton, aren't you? Shit. Well, we were going to do one together. We were going to be. Scylla's doing Aylesbury. I know. Well, I make warming Aylesbury up for Scylla, and I'm warming Southampton up for you with oh. the girls. Oh, so fabulous. We'll be... Oh, fine. I'll leave a little note for you. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll leave you some tennis. Are you looking forward to it? <laughs> Don't! I really am looking for I opened Aylesbury the other night, actually, and, uh, yeah, I'm only doing the... It's nice to be involved. When they're closing theatres now... I know. Uh, but this one is opening. Yeah. And you laid the stone. Yes. And I cut the hand. ribbon. <laughs> and you're at Southampton. Yeah, we were supposed to be together. And I thought, oh, I can't do... How many weeks are you doing? Four. Four. Yeah. Oh. And no. it's only eight shows a week. Well, well, well supposedly. <laughs> yeah. but I, I looked at the schedule and I thought, hang on, I don't remember this. I don't remember <laughs> signing up for this bit, bit of voyage. And will yeah. the grandchildren come and see you? Um, well, she's too little, a little girl. So, but he, he's he'll be nearly four. So yeah, oh, I think, that's a I don't, what's he going to think if his granddad dressed up as an old Chinese? Well, slang? Probably the same thing his mother did. Kids have grown up with it, haven't they? But, you know My what I mean? Grown up with oh, Raquel. there's your gang gang there. He's called Widow <laughs> Twanky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For Sharon, um, reading the book, oh, I'm just being told we must apologise for that language, so sorry What about language? That. I don't know, I didn't hear it. Ah, I never swore. Don't yeah. start on me. I've said the word. I'm like Mother Teresa sat gang. here. But when, when, gang, gang. Gang, um, I said. How did Sharon feel reading the book? Because you're really honest about your reaction to fatherhood. Well, it was... And that was kind, I mean, that must I was, be bittersweet I was 17, 18. I was a kid, you know, mm. and it was, a, it was... I'm writing about the 70s there, so it was all... It was a long time ago. And she always said to me, she fully understood, because especially I was a very image... I was 17 going on three. You know what I mean? I wasn't, I wasn't particular. I was an air out, you know, I was like... Mm. I'd get up in the morning and be like... Bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> My mother would be down there staring at the tea like a cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I never re... I was... You know, there wasn't enough hours in the day for me when I was that age. And just the thought of having a baby and the responsibility of having a baby. When I was earning seven quid a week, you know, you just think it was an impossible, it was just an impossible situation that I really didn't want to be in. Now it's a different story, of yeah. course. Now you've got a great relationship. Oh, she's a sweetheart, I love her, you know, and the kids and see them all the time. I'm so glad, but at 17, if you'd have said to me at 17, look, you'd be all right, kid, in a few years. But at that age, my mum had just, my mum was in hospital, my dad had just died. You'd had a rough time, hadn't yeah. you? There was no one to turn to, really, because mm. there was, we didn't have the facilities that you've got now, you know, with social services. You had the Citizens Advice Bureau with a lady who worked in a cake shop in Heswell of a day. <laughs> <laughs> would you sit there of a nice well, and say, oh, well, yeah. It's um, all in um, here, and I can't wait to read about the silly years. Oh, the silly well, years are yeah. that one. It's the third one. Oh, it's the third one. Wow. Oh, but this one's out right now. <laughs> it's The Devil Rides Out, and as always, it's been our total pleasure. Thanks Paul O'Grady, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>